Hey everyone, my name is Johnny Romes and I'm an outdoor adventure filmmaker and photographer and this is my two month review of Tamron's 50 to 400 millimeter f4.5 to 6.3 lens. Before I get into my thoughts on this lens, I just want to set the groundwork just so we're all on the same page and that there's full transparency here. I am a Tamron ambassador, but that being said, these thoughts are my own and Tamron does not get to view this video and they have absolutely no input in what I talk about in this video. So I am going to be as honest as I can, but I am a Tamron ambassador for a specific reason and that is because I absolutely love to shoot with Tamron glass. I've been using Tamron glass for many years before I became an ambassador and I'll probably be using Tamron glass for the rest of my photo and video career. So to kick things off, recently we've seen some incredible offerings from Tamron, such as the 20 to 40 millimeter f2.8, the 28 to 75 g2 f2.8, the 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8, which is probably my absolute favorite lens. And I will be doing a one year review of that lens very soon. So definitely hit the bell notification so you know when that one is dropping. But this offering, is something that I don't think people have asked for, but it definitely fills a hole in the camera bag of certain types of photographers and videographers. When I saw the announcement for this lens, I immediately thought, wow, this is the perfect lens for a travel photographer. You have a huge range of focal lengths covered in just one lens. If you're traveling or if you're run and gun, you don't have to spend time or waste time changing lenses, going through your camera bag, you know, looking for caps and everything and filters and all of those things. If you're switching, particularly for video, you can just keep, you know, your ND filter on and, you know, job done. You're at 50 to 400, you don't have to switch lenses. But that's kind of where I thought the use case would end. Pretty much just, you know, travel photographers, the person who wants a one lens fits all kind of scenario. So I didn't think this lens would entirely be for me, but I picked it up and I instantly fell in love with it. I took this lens on a trip to Colorado, literally about four days after it arrived, and it was on my camera for about 70% of that trip. I generally shy away from a telephoto focal range, mainly because I generally don't like using a telephoto lens. You know, if we look at true telephoto lenses, I'm not talking about 70 to 200, but like a 100 to 400 or a 150 to 500 or 150 to 600, you know, you're capped at 100 millimeters on that shorter end, which means for me, I'd be changing lenses far too frequently than I'd like. But the fact that this opened all the way up to 50 millimeters, I was reaching for my wide lens a lot less often because there was only very certain circumstances when I needed that, you know, 17 to 20 millimeter focal range. 50 mil was something that I was shooting at more frequently mainly because I was in Colorado and it's such a vast landscape with all of the full colors. You can probably see one on my screen right now. I wanted to really bring out all of that detail. So I was using more of a compressed focal length for this trip. And I just found that this lens was probably the perfect lens for this type of photography that I was creating because it meant I was spending more time making photos and less time changing lenses, thinking what lens I wanted to use, putting one on, realizing it wasn't the right focal length, switching back to another one. Literally, this just stayed on for the majority of that trip. What I find from past experience with lenses that go from such a wide focal range to a telephoto, you know, eight times optical zoom we're talking about here, I often find that they sacrifice build quality to keep the price down. And although, you know, it is a more expensive lens when we're talking about Tamron glass, in the grand scheme of things, it's a really affordable lens when you're looking at the alternatives and you're looking at what it offers in a single lens. Speaking of what it offers, let's talk about the specifications a little bit. So it goes from 50 to 400 millimeters and it is a F4.5 at 50 mil and it goes to 6.3 at 400 mil. One of the great things about this, majority of the Tamron lenses are 67 millimeter filter thread, which is amazing because I don't have to buy a multitude of different filters. Some other specifications, I'm just looking at my screen, so I do apologize. Um, it weighs 40 ounces or 1.2 kilograms. So, you know, it, it's a substantial lens. It's not an incredibly large lens, but it does have some weight to it. And here is a little side-by-side -side comparison against the 28 to 75 G2. As with the majority of the newly released Tamron lenses, we will see a lot of similar features on this 50 to 400. First off is the USB-C port. Now what this allows you to do is 
update and customize this lens without the need of a tap-in console or a device that you plug into the lens that plugs into your computer. Honestly, this is a fantastic feature and I think all lenses should provide this as it negates the need to download the firmware onto your SD card and then plug it into your camera and then do it all through the camera. You can just use the lens utility and it's an excellent piece of software, provides a lot of customizability to these lenses. Speaking of customizability, we have a button on the side of the lens, which we've seen on the G2 28-75 to and some other lenses. And this button you can program to do a multitude of different things, some of which the camera offers itself. There are two three-point switches, the first of which is the vibration control, which is Tamron's lens stabilization. You have two different modes, or you can turn it directly off if you wish. The other three-point switch is a custom one, two, and three. And what this does, it allows you to set preset saved profiles in the lens to change what this button does on the side and to change the function of the focus ring. Unlike the Tamron 150 to 500, on the 50 to 400, we just have a standard lock switch, which locks the zoom ring at 50 millimeters. The aforementioned 150 to 500 had a pull ring, so you could have a customizable lock on any of the focus points on that lens. And I really wish we had it on the 50 to 400. It's something I was disappointed to not see implemented. And I hope it's not something that we just see on that 150 to 500. And hopefully Tamron will bring it to other lenses in the future. All right, now here is about the time when I showcase some of my favorite photos that I've created with this lens over the last couple of months. So sit back and enjoy. In terms of image quality, I've been very impressed with the results that this lens has provided. Generally, when you have a lens with such an extreme focal range, there tends to be some image degradation, particularly on the long end. But thanks to the 24 elements in 18 groups, Tamron have knocked it out of the park with this lens and have been able to maintain superb quality throughout the entire focal range. Now, I'm not just impressed with this lens for photo. For video, this lens has been absolutely fantastic, mainly because of the versatility. I've found this lens to just be incredibly versatile for video, obviously for the same reasons as photo, but for video, I wanna change lenses even less frequently than I do for photo. So being able to go from 50 to 400 in just one lens, for video, it gives me so many options for the type of content that I want to create, particularly as I'm creating video on the road on my own. I'm often setting up my camera on my tripod and setting it to record, and I'm way off in the distance as I like to create scale in the videos that I create with a small subject that's most of the time me. So having something that goes all the way to 400 with excellent image quality and excellent autofocus is very important. And speaking of autofocus, as of the release of this video today, the 15th of December, Tamron have just released version two of the firmware for the 50 to 400 that's come with some incredible improvements to the autofocus of this lens. Now the version two firmware for this lens comes with three very significant upgrades. First one I can't really speak on as I'm not an Android user, but it has added compatibility with this lens with the Tamron Utility mobile software. So if you have an Android phone, you can update the firmware of this lens and do all of that customization that you want to with that Tamron software on your mobile phone, which is actually pretty awesome. And I do hope we'll see that come to Apple phones in the near future, but time will tell. The next upgrade is improved tracking in autofocus, particularly with moving subjects. Now I wasn't disappointed with version one's autofocus performance on this lens, but I was able to test this out over the weekend as this lens does have the new version two firmware. And I did a few videos down in Southern Utah where it was just me walking and I had my camera on a tripod, just solely relying and trusting on the autofocus to track me. And it was locked on. There was zero breathing and there was zero misfocus. So incredibly impressed with that autofocus performance for tracking, particularly in video as that's generally where you see some lenses fall off. 
photo, it can be superb autofocus performance, but generally in video, sometimes the autofocus can slow down or miss or just be a little bit sluggish, but this has been absolutely incredible. The final update that version two firmware brings to the 50 to 400 is the compatibility with Sony's autofocus assist. Now, if you're unfamiliar with autofocus assist, mirrorless cameras, because the lenses are focused by wire, they're not a manual focus like on DSLR cameras where you can essentially, for the most part, override the autofocus, whether you're in photo or video. Focus by wire, it doesn't do anything. It's, it's all programmed. There's no mechanical movements there. But the focus assist allows you to override autofocus. Now in video, this allows you to create some really cinematic scenes by pulling focus very smoothly. And what the updated firmware has brought to this lens is that compatibility. So this lens will now allow you when using certain Sony cameras that has the autofocus assist to use that function by overriding the autofocus with that manual focus ring. It just offers so many possibilities for creativity in video. And I just love to see that Tamron is constantly trying to improve and make their lenses as compatible as possible with the Sony mirrorless systems. So I highly recommend that you go to Tamron's website and download the updated firmware for your 50 to 400 if you have it. If you don't have this lens and you're looking to buy it, I'm sure most of them will be getting updated soon. But if you do get one, definitely check the version of that firmware and make sure it is version two, as that will be the latest version at this current time. So in conclusion, my thoughts on this lens. For $1,299, you are getting probably one of the most versatile lenses out there. If you're already interested and like shooting at compressed focal ranges, but want a little bit more flexibility, you cannot go wrong with this lens. So for travel photographers and landscape photographers, I definitely think this is one that you want to consider to add to your kit. And if you want to have a very minimal condensed kit, you pair this lens with the 20 to 40 and you have 20 mil all the way to 400 in just two lenses. And the biggest thing is there's really nothing to compare this to. There's no other lens currently modern with all of the bells and whistles that you expect from a modern lens for a mirrorless camera system that has such an extreme focal range with excellent image quality. So hopefully this has answered some questions that you may have had if you are considering the 50 to 400 mil lens. I'll leave both links for this lens and the updated firmware in the description of this video. And if there's something that I wasn't able to cover that you had a burning question about, just drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Or feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at Johnny Romes as I'm very active on there and I'll always respond to that probably quicker than I do on YouTube. And I also post a lot of content that I've got with this lens. So if you want to see more examples of both photo and video, definitely head over to Instagram as well. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.